Indian Mimi. We will start in a 90 degrees uh, elbow flexion position. We can uh, palpate the, the lateral uh, epicondyle with our thumb. And just, re just remind to put it off because we have to put the probe on it. Okay, we do that and we see now the, the proximal part that, oh, that the probe is on the lateral epicondyle. But I don't see really clear the radial head. So I have to rotate the distal part of the probe a little bit to see if we can scan the radial head really clearly. I want to see really clear uh, bony lines. Okay, and we can go in this direction. I have now the good direction. We can go a little bit up, a little bit down until you see the most curvy appearance. And if you see the most curvy appearance, then we are on the, on the um, common extensor tendon. So I go down a little bit, and this is perfect for the common extensor tendon. And you can actually see really good at, at the bottom of the soft tissues here, this is actually, it's a little bit more hypoechoic. These are the, the ligaments, so it's RCL, RCL. So radial collateral ligament. That's the one most, most deep of the soft tissues. Then we have the, um, a little bit of a synovial fringe in between the, the joints, between the radial head and the humerus. So this is a synovial fringe. These are the, the, the ligament layers. Then this middle layer is composed of uh, extensor DTG minimi and also the extensor carpi radialis brevis. And on top, you can actually see it really often, really clearly. This more or less hypoechoic region, that is the extensor digitorum communis. So these are the three layers for the, for the common extensor tendon, but we want to isolate the brevis more. So if we go up a little bit towards the shoulder, then we can isolate the brevis more. So I'll go up, I lose a little bit the curvy, uh, um, curvy appearance, like you see. So here it's more curvy. Go a little bit up, I lose the radial head. <coughs> I'm sorry, lose the radial head. And then the next thing I do to, to make it a perfect image is my distal, uh, distal side of the probe. It's moving more upwards than my, uh, than my uh, proximal part. So if I go up, I go up. This one a little bit more then this is the perfect example of the brevis here with the longus on top. So this is the brevis. I don't see a clear image of the radial head because I'm, I'm above the radial head and this is the extensor carpi radialis brevis. This is the longus. And if I go from this position on, I go more towards the shoulder, I will lose totally the whole uh, lateral epicondyle and I move into the, the supra uh, epicondylar ridge. We will see. Okay, so I come from this position, the, the more uh, uh, common extensor tendon, I move up, I go here, this is a perfect example of the uh, brevis, I move up and I lose, immediately I lose the total lateral epicondyle. So now I'm on the, on the ridge above the uh, lateral epicondyle. So that would be the long axis view. Now let's go for the short axis view. I start more distally above the, um, the radial head the radial shaft actually I, this is the um, this is the supinator muscle these are the common extensor muscles i go more to the to the proximal part the the bony cortex will come up because we go to the radial head here this is radial head you can see it with the hypoechoic or unechoic appearance above the uh, cortex that's uh, that's uh, uh, cartilage and then we have the annular ligament over there. And if we go a little bit more to proximal, then we don't have a, a bony, uh, bony landmark anymore because we're in the joint space between the radius and the, and the humerus. I go a little bit more to proximal. And then we have a perfect example of the lateral epicondyle. Here we see the longus. This is brachioradialis. This is longus. And the most proximal one of the whole bundle the whole common extensor tendon, the most proximal one is the extensor digitorum brevis. So besides that, it's the DGT minimi, above it, it's the communis, and the lowest one is the ulnaris tendon. So that's, um, that's a short image, short axis image.